Hi guys, I just quickly wanted to show you guys um, a few retopology tricks um, in this short video. So, manual retopology is never fun, but luckily there are some uh, some great tools in Blender that you can use. So, right here I have a skull thing that I sculpted, um, and I I sculpted this in ZBrush, and then I just brought this into Blender. So. If I go into wireframe mode, you'll see that um, the topology is really dense and this wouldn't work for animation or games or anything like that. Now, um, ZBrush has some really good um, automatic retopology, but it's, um, especially for games and low, low poly type stuff, it's really not um, good enough. You need more control and uh, unfortunately the only way to do that is manual. Um, Blender also has some great retopology add-ons, but some of them you have to buy, others are um, kind of clunky to use in my opinion. Uh, not all of them are ama as amazing as they sound, so and I kind of always do my retopology in Blender and I, I never had, have an issue with it, so um, I'm going to show you some of the built-in tools and um, hopefully you, uh, if you're new to read topology, then um, you'll be able to take away a few um, tips and hints from this video. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane, and I'm going to delete all the vertexes on the plane except one. So this one here I'm keeping. Now the first thing about read topology is you want the vertex to stick onto the surface of the high-res mesh. So to do that, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Firstly, you can add a modifier to the vertex and go to shrink wrap and then just click on the little eyedropper tool here to tell the vertex mesh to snap to um, whatever, you know. So now, if I click on this button over here, it will show me in real time a preview of the vertex um, on, on, um, sticking to the to the surface of the mesh and also you can click this button keep above surface to sort of make it uh, stay on top now this is a useful method in some cases but you can see here it's not exactly doing a very good job of it's jumping around a bit and um, so this is not a very good way to do this. Um, sometimes it can be useful, so just be aware that you can do it this way. But um, overall it's it's pretty clunky as you can see. So it's snapping around, it's uh, being a bit random. So this isn't um, what I typically like to do for a complex mesh like this. So another way we can do it is to go down here at the bottom of the 3D view. There are some buttons here and then this this little um, magnet button here, if you click on that and then this fly up next to it, you open that up and select face. What this does is it's going to snap the vertex to any faces that it encounters while you have the vertex selected. So now it's doing a much better job of um, staying sort of uh, um, stuck to the surface of the high-res mesh. So this is really useful and you can immediately start doing your retopology and getting some really nice results but there's a problem if you look from the side here you'll notice that only one of the vertices that I've selected actually stuck to the mesh um, this is because if you select multiple vertices and you extend all of them at once they'll only try to find a sort of average uh, position so they won't all individually stick to the surface and this is frustrating because this means that you'll have to go to every single vertex and sort of um, get it to stick right so this is um, it's a step in the right direction now that we've got the vertexes to stick on the surface but we still want them to behave correctly when you select more than one so again if you look I've, I've selected a whole row of them and I've extended them here and they only try to find a sort of average and then I have to go to every vertex and make it stick to the surface so this is really not ideal 
um, and it would make my life a lot easier if I could have more than one vertex at a time stick to the surface perfectly. So obviously there are a couple ways to do this. Firstly you can use the shrink wrap modifier actually and this time if you add the shrink wrap modifier you can see that now I and oh yes don't forget to uh, disable uh, enable it here so you can see now I when I um, extend this they all stick to the surface perfectly but they do jump around a little bit so not not nearly as badly as um, as before but they still do jump around a bit so it's not ideal but it's um, at least now we've got all the vertexes sticking to the surface and none of them here are um, sort of flying off in different directions they're, they're more or less working and this is workable so um, and it makes your life a lot easier definitely so that's one way to do it so I'm gonna actually apply this um, this shrink wrap modifier uh, hang on apply okay and I'm going to show you another um, trick that is far easier to use um, for retopology to make all the vertexes stick at once so if you go down here at the bottom of the 3d view and you click on this little button right here project individual elements onto the surface of other objects so if you click on that and now you select the row of vertexes let's say this one alt click on this and if I extend it, it it remains rock steady and I can tweak it perfectly and if you look from the side you can see they all stuck beautifully onto the surface so this is probably the best way to get them all to stick now in some cases it doesn't work perfectly because if I were to have a row of vertexes that went around the mesh all the way around and I selected all of them uh, let me illustrate for you so if I have say a row of vertexes going like this all the way around the mesh let's say something like that okay and I if I were to select all of these by clicking um, alt and right clicking on it if I selected this now and I accidentally let go you can see what happens they all snap to this side of the mesh because what how this thing works is it literally projects the vertexes from the screens perspective onto the mesh so you gotta be really careful otherwise you'll get some of these um, horrible uh, artifacts so in a case like this if you wanted all of them to stick to the mesh while you extend them like this it would be better to use the shrink wrap modifier because it doesn't do this kind of funky effect where, where it um, projects them all from one side so just keep that in mind um, so now I'm going to just quickly do a few more um, place a few more words here so that you guys can see how I go about um, doing this so also you can see here I've got uh, let me just flip the normal so you can see the faces better control in here I've got four vertexes and I want to make a face out of them now obviously I can go and select every single one and press F to make a face but I can also select just the first one here and press uh, control on the keyboard and just control click on the last one so it makes it connects them all it makes it uh, this works similarly to if you click here and control click somewhere over here it tries to make a line between the two selections so this is the same thing so I click on this and control click on this one and it makes a nice selection of the four vertexes here and I just press F and it's perfect so that's one way to do it another way uh, besides actually just extending them remember we've got it projecting onto the surface here so it's not it's not doing anything weird so you could just extend them here but what if you actually had two two rows of words here let's say this one here and you forgot to kind of join them up so 
the way to do this would be to select these two words here and press F and immediately Blender can see that there are two rows here extending this way so if you just keep pressing F it keeps finding the next um, couple of verts so it can make faces and now you've got a nice row of faces right there so that's um, a very nifty way to do this another way to to join up different rows of verts let's say we have a row here and we have another one here and they're not joined together what I can do is I can select this row and then control click on these two to select that row as well and then I can hit spacebar on the keyboard and search for a function called bridge bridge edge loops and if you select that one you can see that Blender finds the two different rows of vertexes and joins them up so these are just a few tools that I use quite a lot when I do retopology and they do make my life a lot easier and I've I've found lately that I don't really even need many add-ons because um, yeah, these, these tools are actually good enough. You just need a bit of practice with them and then you'll be able to do some really complicated um, retopology even stuff that um, normally wouldn't be possible if you used an automated solution. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and I hope you learned something from this from this uh, little video. Thanks.